the Jay Smart Podcast, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Listen, thanks for your company wherever you are in the world now. So many people listen to this podcast, so thank you very much. Whatever it is that you're doing, you might be on a run. I don't know. Uh, you could be down the gym. You could be on a train, plane, automobile, or you could be in the kitchen rustling up something lovely, which is a beautiful segue introducing my next guest. My next guest is a professional chef, an ex-model, which is why I'm always glad, of course, sometimes when I don't have video on these podcasts. He's the face of MS Food. He's the social media cooking sensation is the best way I would describe him. He's now infamous Cook Along With Chris Instagram series has been seen by tens of thousands of people. He has a very large celebrity following, particularly with that series. And we get on to that as we do the podcast. He's what I would describe the new kid on the cooking block. And he is the most famous baber after Asa, of course. I can only be talking about the one and only, it's Chris Baber, everybody. Come on, let's get it. Chris, how's that for an intro, my man? Wow, quite blown away with that, to be honest, Jason. Unbelievable. Listen, Asa, so I was looking today. So what we normally do is like my first ever guest on my podcast was lovely Lorraine Kelly of The Lorraine Show. And of course, her one was very easy. The second most famous Lorraine after quiche, right? Very apt for this this cooking podcast. So we normally have the second most famous whatever it is after this Mm -hmm. person. Now with Baber, of course, you know, as I was looking this morning, I was thinking, I can't think of another famous Baber anywhere. And then I thought, well, I'll, I'll Google it because that's always what people do. I've noticed yeah. that people don't Yahoo it or they don't Bing it. It, it looks like Yahoo and Bing didn't get the old... Uh, they might ask so, Jeeves, though. They, 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 <laughs> go on! <laughs> I didn't think you were even old enough to remember yeah. Jeeves. But yeah, poor old Jeeves. I wonder what he's up to nowadays. What is Jeeves up to? I mean, he'd be cancelled now anyway. He'd probably be, I don't know, sexist or something. I don't know. He'd be cancelled. Yeah. He, wouldn't, he wouldn't be allowed, Jeeves, now. No, he um, wouldn't. But then I looked, apparently Asa, I think if you're A-S-A, Asa Baber. And there's not a lot of information about this person. All it says is they are the most famous baby. Well, I think, I think Asa, somebody is about to take your mantle. And that would be uh, Chris Baber. Now, look, there'd be some people stuck in a, I don't know where they'd be stuck, but that might not have heard of you or come across your work. So just, I mean, you're a professional chef ex model. I know you was in a show in 2016 called Yes Chef and, and, and yeah. you won there. So, and that was a BBC show as well. How does one go from being a professional model and then go, well, I think I'll be a chef? Or was it always you had the oh. passions for both or you or you didn't have a passion for modeling? I don't know. What is it? Okay. Well, first of all, what an intro. Asa Baber, I need to check this guy out. I'm going to ask Jeeves about him. How did I go from that to that? Well, food was always the passion from growing up. I can't remember like not getting in from school, just cooking dinner for my parents and loving the process. And also putting a smile on people's faces. I think you make people happy with food. That's what makes you enjoy it. And then the whole modeling thing, you know, I didn't go to uni. I didn't go traveling. I was working in jobs that I didn't really enjoy. I had no passion for. Cooking was obviously always a passion and a hobby. And then I got pulled into modeling. Friend of mine doing pretty well with it. Chris, you can make a few quid. Come and do this. And I was doing it a few years or whatever. And then, you know what? I used to text pictures of food to my friends, like just send texts. And my friends like, you should get on Instagram. I'm sick of getting texts. Show people how to do it. I thought I'm not really into this social media thing, but hey, ho, I'll give it a go anyway. Then 2016, started just literally taking pictures of me dinner every night, posting it online on Instagram. And then a few months later, some guy messaged me. I thought it was a joke. So now I'm researching for a show called Yes Chef on BBC. Do you want to do it? I said, well, yeah, why not? And then went and did this show. Like Sort of long story short, there was a Michelin star chef called Atul Kutcher, who was the judge on the day, ended up winning the show. With him, it was like a daytime version of MasterChef. And then after the show, he went, Chris, I know you're a home cook and you use social media, but seriously, you can cook. If you want a job, move to London. You can work at my Michelin star restaurant. Two weeks later, I packed my bag, left Northumberland and moved down to London. And that is really it. That's the story. Wow. Never looked back since. So, but and- I, do you know what? I'd never taken a risk in my life. Like I said, I hadn't been to uni, hadn't been traveling. I was 25 at the time, still living with my parents. And I thought, do you know what? I've just got to go for it. And Atul, funnily enough, on the application for this TV show, I had to fill in. It said, who's your favorite chef? I'd written Atul Kutcher. And then you had to create like a signature dish on the day. And I created this pan-fried sea bass with a coconut curry based on one of his recipes from one of his books. 
So I turn up. I didn't know he was going to be there. I've got all these ingredients laid out in front of me. And he walks down to the table, looks at the ingredients, and he's like, Chris, I'm pretty confident what you're going to cook today. And just looked at me. I'm thinking, my God, this could go one or two ways here. He knows I'm cooking one of his dishes. <laughs> Either way, I was like shaking like a leaf carrying this plate of food up to him. And I remember I put it on the table. He took a mouthful. He didn't say anything for about 10 seconds. And he just went, you've absolutely nailed it. And those words still give me goosebumps. That was the moment where you go from getting recognition from friends and family to a Michelin star chef saying you can cook. Then that's what really gave me the belief to think, do you know what? I should be doing something with my passion. Well, that's a sliding door moment. That is what I call a sliding door moment. And that's why those words will inevitably be with you for the rest of your life. And indeed, in many years to come, when you write your autobiography. Yeah. Um, that is interesting because when I was 25, I left London for the first time. I didn't go to uni. I didn't do any of that stuff either. Yeah. I left London to go to Birmingham, weirdly, to run a stop smoking clinic. And I was way out of my depth. But it was a massive risk. And in the same way you were 25, went down to London. Now, how long were you down there for? Because you've returned, presumably. to your, And where's your hometown? My hometown's Northumberland. Do you know, I'm still in london so okay yeah i went to work in the restaurant which was amazing i was there six months this is when i really realized what my true passion is it's not just food but it's inspiring people to cook i was learning an incredible amount in a fine dining restaurant in mayfair incredible food amazing experience elevated my skills but what i missed was that feedback from instagram where i'd post one of my own recipes and a family would message and say chris Cooked that with the kids, they ate all the veg, it was delicious, we're having the leftovers for lunch. That is where I get my kicks rather than serving fine dining food in a restaurant, which I've got a lot of respect for, but I realised that isn't for me. I'm all about educating people. Yeah, and you do, and you also impact. We had a conversation not that long ago, I happened to be in Portugal at the time when we did, and I just remember coming across your platform, and I come across quite a few people's platforms, and they tend to be... Uh, it's an awful thing to say, but there's a great deal of them. And I'm sure that you would agree with this. They aren't very genuine. What they're doing it for their passion is mm. to become known and famous rather than what they're about. Like my passion yeah. was always about juicing. It was, it, it was always about changing lives and it remains that way even today. And I was watching this cook along with Chris series. And by the mm. way, anybody listening now, they're all on his Instagram, right? All the links yeah. will be up there as well, but you just go back. They're timeless as well. And it's wonderful because during the whole lockdowns and everything else, I don't know when people will be listening to this because it'll be timeless anyway, but we're recording it pretty much as we're about to come out of the third lockdown in the UK. And of course, a service that you've been providing, which it is because it's free for everybody. I mean, you think mm. about this is that nobody's paying for any of this and you are buying all the ingredients, you're making all the recipes, you're running around like crazy because you're doing a million things. You're being called upon by God knows how many people. And you can only do that really if you have a genuine passion for what you're doing and you're trying to get to more people. And I've noticed you have, like I saw one that, that you're cooking along with Paddy McGuinness. And I was like, yeah. This is like Jamie Oliver on steroids back in the day. It's like, where did this guy come from? And like I said, I'm a Northern, well, I don't sound Northern, but all my family from Yorkshire, hi, yeah. boot down. And, <laughs> and there's something, I don't know, there's something about up there. It's just that genuineness. Again, I keep saying it, but you are one of the very few genuine humans uh. out there that are doing what they're doing, which is why before I was coming on today to record this, I went, God, if there were shares in Chris Babe, I'd buy them. Uh. I said, because this guy's going to be freaking huge. You're big enough already, but you're going to be yeah. freaking huge. And right uh. so, and not because you want to be huge. So how did Paddy McGuinness, how did these celebs come about? Yeah, so, I mean, the cook-alongs, I did two series. One of them was actually right in the middle of lockdown. I thought, how can I help families out there? And that was just me on my own, easy recipes, families to cook with their kids or get the kids cooking. And I'd do it three nights a week. And do you know what? It gave me a lot of structure living on my own doing that. And that was really good fun. And it was just the sort of food you want to eat for dinner. That's how I describe my food. Bangers and mash, easy curries, the sort of food we crave. And the most heartwarming thing about that was getting messages from a family's picture. A, a young lad stood on a stool with his dad saying, oh, the lads cooked this tonight. It's the first time they've ever cooked anything together. Oh. We're going to make that every week. And to think I've inspired people to start cooking and even their first meal with me, it, it's absolutely, it, well, like I say, heartwarming. And then on the other side of the cook-along, I started a bit of a celeb series. Again, I think that was... I'm losing track of which lockdown was which. But I'm thinking <laughs> there's been so many of the yeah, yeah, 
And this one again, I mean, it's teaching them to cook, eat food at home. A lot of them, like Paddy, I'd met him doing jobs with MS. Who else have I had on? Joel Dommer, Ryland, Tom Daly, Vic Hope, Jenny Faulkner. There's loads. And a lot of them I've met maybe once or twice. We keep in touch. Some of them I'm quite close with anyway. And just say, look, let's have a bit of fun. Is there anything you'd like to learn to cook that you've maybe eaten in a takeaway? We call the Faber Flavors Takeaway. Um, or anything. Well, you can't just skip by that. The Baber Flavor. Baber. I did see a hashtag called Baber Flavor. I did see yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that's sort of the hashtag I've gone with. I thought, what rhymes with Baber? There's not many famous Babers. Nothing much rhymes with it either. So I thought, does Flavor rhyme kind of? We'll, yeah, we'll roll does. with it. Go with it, Baber um, Flavor. I like it. Anyway, so go on. I interjected. Yeah. Go on. So, so the celeb one, I mean, that was just really good fun. And t- just literally go on there. I'd, I'd send them the list of ingredients. We'd log on, have like an hour cooking along together. And at the end, they've ended up with this dish in front of them. They'll eat it and go, do you know what? That was really easy and delicious. And I think that just sums me up. It's food for anyone. It doesn't matter who you are. It's real food for real people. And these celebs, they're all normal people that's at the end name. of the day. By the way, Chris, that's a good name for a book, that. Real food, real people, Chris Baber. I see it already. Yeah, I, I see think, it. It, it, that, that, I mean, that sort of sums it up. Real people living real lives, I think. Keep it simple. Everything you can buy from the supermarket. But yeah, the celeb thing, a lot, a lot of fun. I mean, the one with Paddy, God, you can watch them back on my Instagram. At the time, I'd been probably in the flat on my own for about eight weeks or whatever in wow. lockdown. And it was the most I'd laughed in, <laughs> in uh, not just lockdown, but I think yeah. for a couple of years, where literally he was rinsing me. But he's the nicest guy, you know? And uh, we made this old-fashioned cheese and onion pie. He said, oh, it's, it's what I used to eat growing up. I saw up. it. No, I saw it. I, saw um, it. I watched it. I thought it was freaking hilarious. He had a busy day. I had a load of builders and that turn up at the house. So I'm standing there ready to cook. And either way, he ring me up. Sorry, I'm late. I still want to jump on. And yeah, it was fantastic. But they've been really, really fun. And I put that series on pause at the minute. Just because we're coming out of lockdown, the nights are getting lighter. Maybe I'll resume it later in the year, or it could even be a good TV show or something, couldn't it? I think it'd be really good. Yeah. And and the thing is, is that some people listening will go, oh, well, what does it matter if a celebrity is mm. cooking because they're just humans that do another job? I think we can't underestimate the power of the public eye influence. Mm. And people talk about that negatively sometimes, but I think it's an incredibly positive thing, especially when it comes to something like this. Now, what lockdown and everything else has taught most people is that taking care of what they put into their body is of paramount mm. importance, Chris. Not slightly okay, not that we're all you know indestructible. We need a very strong defense system. Now, what I, again, love about what you do, everything that mm. I've seen anyway, unless I'm wrong along the way, but everything I've seen you do is all about fresh ingredients. Yeah. It's what I call low HI food. Don't look it up. I made it up, but it's called low HI okay. food, low human intervention. So people say, oh, should I be a vegetarian, a vegan? I said, look, I'm not advocating any of that stuff. Mm. What you should look for is low human intervention food. So how much has a human interfered with my food? Take a chicken kiev, for example. You can make a very healthy chicken kiev. You also know that you can get a chicken kiev in a packet that has never seen mm. Russia or a chicken for that matter. And, yeah. and, so, and so yours is about, like you said, it's normal meals, but anybody, chefs have tried it in the past, but you make it so anybody can freaking do it. Anybody. Well, I think the thing that summed it up was when I had kids cooking along. I've always said the food's easy, but when you've got thousands of kids around the country cooking these recipes, it's easy enough for a child to do. The way I look at it, my food is easy enough for a complete novice, but the flavor of it will satisfy someone who's really into food. Didn't you just, didn't you just break a, uh, a record of some kind? Did I read that oh, somewhere? Yeah, I, I, just I broke forgot a about that. I, I, I broke forgot, the world yeah, record. I do that. Yeah. I, bro- I break world records um, all the time and I just forget. You know, it was a long day that I just landed. We've been filming in Jersey, doing some Jersey Royal stuff. I'm massive on British seasonal ingredients. And then we got back and I went to M&S and we planned this world record attempt. So I, I think we got the world record for the world's largest live cook-along. So wow, that, was, that was pretty fun. Pretty fun. That's a great accolade, isn't it? The mm. the biggest cook along. And like you said, when you see a family cooking together, and one of the things you said earlier on in the podcast, it's just one of those heartwarming dishes, right? But it's also heartwarming stories. You can glaze over, I suppose, a father cooking with his son for the first time. Yeah. 
But unless you had, unless you decided to do this cook along with Chris, right? And put all that work and effort and everything into it that you're not getting paid for at all. And then you put all that thing into it. And then because of that, a father and son cook along for the first time together, which is a monumental bonding experience. And then it will teach the kid to go, oh, hang on, maybe there's something in this cooking from scratch. Maybe not everything comes from a packet. How passionate are you in terms of takeaway foods compared to home cooking? Is there a time that you would think, well, actually the odd takeout here and there is okay. So what's kind of ratio that you would say to people to try and aim for? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion on that. But for me, everything in moderation, you know, I think, if I'm eating fresh home cooked food six days a week, if you want to go and treat yourself, if it's a takeaway or obviously I love eating and out, I've got a lot of friends with lovely restaurants. I think it's just about getting the balance right, isn't it? And also thinking about how much activity you're doing to go alongside it. But there's nothing wrong for me anyway to have a takeaway. I, no, I really I, no, don't I hear, see a problem I with that. it. I don't see a problem either with it. In all my books, I say, let common sense prevail. People think that yeah. I live on nothing but juice and I advocate all of that. I don't. I always say you don't want to spend your one and only life trying to extend your life only to realize you missed your life in the process. And exactly. Do you know what? One wrong. thing I always say is food is a joy. Like it really is. It's one of the joys in life. And if probably just similar to what you're saying, if you spend your life focusing too much on eating the good stuff, but you're missing out on what this joyful thing is. I mean, if you want to go and have a burger with your friends, it's not just about the burger, but it's about sitting around the table, having a good time together. And some people I think are so concerned. Oh, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. I think you've got to have a healthy relationship with food and eating a bit of what you fancy does you good in my opinion. Well, I, th- I think that's the case. And I think the challenge is a healthy relationship with food. And it all depends because, of mm. course, some big food obviously design themselves with refined fat, salt, and sugar to such an extent that they want to hit what's called a bliss point, which means that actually yeah. it ceases to be the person's choice if they consume a huge amount of it. However, I'm a big fan of what you do most of the time determines your health. What you do most exactly. of the time determines your health. And we were designed, I hate to admit this now, but for seven years, I was not only a vegan, but I was an obsessed human, right? So mm. I was I was wheat-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, mm. friends-free, personality-free. And that that is what, t- unfortunately, yeah. is, what, is what tends to happen. I always cited the bonobo chimpanzee, which I just like that word. It was 99.99% genetically the same as a human, and they only eat berries and green leaves and so on. And that was my kind of evidence. But of course, that other 1% is a huge deal, because the other 1%, as you just mentioned there, yeah, but bonobo chimpanzees don't go out for dinner. They don't cook <laughs> along with their dad. They don't play chess. They don't have a dinner party. The ones came out of that seven years. And I think I was meant to go through that journey for whatever reason, but I did. And then realized that actually, like having a dessert as another example with your partner for argument's sake, you know, you get two spoons and it might be a, you know, homemade profiterole, whatever it is. Mm. That's the human element to that. That isn't about, oh, let's go and have some sugar together. That's not what you're consciously saying. I always say to people after a juice plan or whatever the case is, look, do whatever you want to do afterwards. It's your life. Design whatever you want to do. If you've got a real weight issue, you keep going backwards and forwards. I always think that don't gain weight cheaply. And what I mean by that is this is look, you know, you go out for dinner, you go, if it's with friends and you're all having a great time and you're tasting the rich tapestry of life and you gain a little bit of weight because of that and you happen to have a holiday for a couple of weeks, whatever, just clean up, no big deal. You haven't gained weight cheaply. But I would say if you're sitting indoors doing absolutely nothing, eating nothing but crisps and drinking cans of soda and all that, yeah. you've gained weight cheaply. There's got to be a, a benefit of some kind, at least, you know, having a good time yeah. with friends. Um, I really like that way to look at it. it. It's a really good one. Just makes you think, doesn't it? Think twice about how are you potentially gaining this weight? Are you out having a good time on holiday or are you sat at home eating crisps? I think that's a fantastic yeah. way. Just don't do it yeah. cheaply. If you're going to at least have a trade off, is what I think. Yeah, uh, exactly. At least, at least some sort of reward at the end of it. Now, there's so many uh, Instagram, I mean, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because Instagram, oh God, it took me ages to even get on it. I didn't, not yeah. that I didn't believe in it. I'm of the wrong generation, clearly. But it was just like, well, you know, what? what's that new thing? It was <laughs> called yeah. Instagram. But of course, it's a great platform, but it's equally another platform that do you find, and does it frustrate you? I don't know if it does or doesn't, that when you see food influencers, let's just say that for argument's sake, when you see... I don't know, just, I, I don't know how, how to say it without getting myself in trouble, but they're often, 
I, I don't know, I don't, I've got to be really careful. Go on, go but, for but it. Sometimes all of a yeah. sudden they're expert chefs and they're not, they're clearly not. They've never been into a kitchen, never trained to be a chef, never done this. And all of a sudden they're going, this is how, does it frustrate you sometimes that actually they're making out that they're either chefs or whatever. And I know you're too polite to even say anything, but yeah. if you had an honest head on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, well, do you know what? I think the word influence is a big one. I think for me, I always thought of myself as a chef with an influence. I didn't there you go join oh, yeah. Instagram to become an influencer. I don't think that word was really no, a thing when no. I first joined. Where did that come uh, from? That's a very good yeah. point, Chris. Because people said, oh, I'm an, I remember asking somebody what, what they did. I was on the beach and they went, I'm an yeah. influencer. And I remember going, yeah. what the hell have you just said? Yeah, well, you work in like psychology or something. What's your job? I don't know. <laughs> it's, I think everything I do comes because I care about it. And as long as I focus on what I'm bothered about, if someone with millions of followers wants to do a cookbook and has all the recipes written for them, then let them go ahead and do it. But do you know what? I love what I do so much. I, t- I try not to pay much attention no, to, to people that, mean. and I also, I'm very selective with who I follow. So anything like that, I don't tend to be following it because I'm not interested. No, there is that, and, but it tends to pop up these days anyway. The odd thing does pop up and I think, God, I definitely wouldn't want to be eating that. That's horrific. I love getting into food. I mean, and I like yeah. the fact that you're on my podcast because people, hmm. again, for whatever reason, maybe because I've done it for 20 years, are convinced that I only drink juice <laughs> which yeah. which which nothing could be further from the truth but i'm an abysmal chef right i'll be honest okay. with you. like i've written one cookbook when yeah. i say that it was more my partner kate that really there was me kate and a couple of others in my house and we just put it together right we decided uh-huh. to self-publish it and this that and the other because that's another story but anyway but we did that and i love it it's called super fast food i love the book and everything else however there is however people say are you going to write another one not in a million years right and yeah. i tell you why because i don't think people appreciate the amount like your cook along series the amount of work that that would have taken you I, there's no way that people would possibly have an inkling from the shot shopping finding the ingredients as well because you might set out to do a recipe and they go oh freak yeah. i've got it there and then you start hunting around god knows how many different shops and during mm-hmm. lockdown that must have been a nightmare as well because it's not easy to go shopping or to get a delivery slot yeah or anything else. and i was looking at your stuff and i thought do you know what and this is why i wanted you on my podcast because i thought you really are one of the very few shows i think i can i can learn from him now mm. i don't normally think because i'm i'm quite a, yeah i can do that but i think i can learn because i tend to be standing in the kitchen I'm a stand in the kitchen guy that yeah. stands in the kitchen with a whole meal pit of bread, stuck it in the, in the oven quickly, wait for uh-huh. it to get a little bit warm, shove a load of avocado, load of salad in there, maybe a little bit of hot salmon, boom, shove that in, bit yeah. of pesto, boom. Sounds all right. I can fancy that now. Jason. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, really, it's really quite nice. <laughs> yeah. but it's very, I mean, it's not chefing. It's, it's, no. it, it's, it's, it's not even cook. It's nothing. It's throwing ingredients together, which is what I think I do. I throw, yeah. like, like people go, oh, you've made a lovely salad. It's like, oh, come on, really? It's not, that's not, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like you get away with murder because you're like, you're putting together a salad. That's not rocket science. Mind you, having said that, I've seen some abysmal salads. So I'll take that back a little bit, actually. <laughs> that's, uh, some of them are, a tr- you think, really, that's not Are these salad. some of these dodgy people you follow on an Instagram? They're the ones. <laughs> some of these influencers. <laughs> some, some of these influencers go, look, do you know an avocado, by the way? I don't know if you're aware of this. An avocado is the most photographed image on Instagram in the world. Do you know? God, it's amazing. I mean, avocados have barely made it up into Northumberland, where I am from. <laughs> the further north you get, it yeah. is a funny thing. There is a definite, you are quite right. In, in fact, I don't know if you've heard of some, I, I lived in Booth down in Halifax for a year um, yeah. uh, with my auntie Elder and Uncle George, and I went to school there as well. And she introduced me. You would have heard of it, I'm guessing. But explain what it is to our listeners, if they don't, something called dripping. Dripping. Yeah, dripping's basically just beef fat. I mean, I love it. So if I'm doing roast potatoes, I'll do it in dripping. And it's a very Yorkshire thing. So if you go, God, I'm excited. This is how much I love food. Dripping in like Yorkshire and stuff. If you go to the fish and chip shop, they will do everything in beef dripping. So you get like a unique flavor around the chips and the fish because it's not oil it's beef dripping when i was a kid it was always fish and chip friday up north and we'd yeah. make a special trip to go harry ramsden lad i yeah and so i lad even the vegans can't have chips and that can because they're done in beef fat 
No, and actually, I think it was one of the big chains years ago. Again, they were cooking them in some kind of beef fat or something at the time. Yeah. And I think that a few people that were vegan just went, well, that's crazy. <laughs> but she introduced me to Drippy. I was like, what is that? So I was, I was about seven or eight, come up from London because mm. we got kicked out in the streets. Long involved story, Will Smalley's violin. But anyway, my auntie Hilda was taking care of me. And I'm there and she goes, all right, I'll tell you what you need inside you, lad, a bit of dripping and a tea cake. And I was like, what is she just <laughs> I have no idea what you've even just said. So I thought it was a cup of tea and a cake is what I thought I was yeah. going to have. And then it can only be described as a, a very large white bap, right? I didn't, yeah. this, this thing was almost the size of my head, right? I bet. And then she went, right, let's put a bit of dripping on that. I said, what's that? Anyway, so obviously it was the beef out, so from the day before, but it was swimming around in this pan that had been left yeah. out. It was like black. Not all of it was black, just at the yeah. edges, you know, that kind of stuff. She put it, lacquered it on, like fat, on white bread, right? Tons yeah. of salt. And even when I was eight, I thought, even there's an intuitive thing thinking, that's wrong. I took a bite of it. It was, as you said, I know it's awful. And I'm sorry for my usual listeners listening in, or vegan or whatever. It was one of the nicest things I've ever had in my life. And I but thought, then think about the HI. Where was the human intervention? That was fat that came out of a lovely piece of beef that was probably roasted on a Sunday. It's natural food, isn't it? No, I hear that. But we could get into such a big debate because some people, I mean, bear in mind, I spoke at several raw food events. So there's some people say that natural food, for example, they would say, well, look, if you cook it, it's not natural. Don't get me started uh, on that because we could be yeah. here forever. Um, but <laughs> but either just, way, it like, tasted good. I bet it did. Oh my God. It was one of those. Mm. And it was one of the hardest things really for me to stop eating. Yeah. And, and here's the weird thing that some of my listeners know and some don't, but I went on, my uncle owns a butcher shop and I ended up being okay. a butcher. I don't know if you know. I was a, no, I, I didn't was, know. Fantastic. I was a butcher. So my uncle was a really good cook. It goes along with that. Very few normal yeah. normal butchers, not not these commercial butchers. He has one shop. Yeah. Everybody knows him. He is the, yes, he knows how to cook everything and all that kind of stuff. And he's he's what I'd call a really good cook. I mean, he could have probably been a, a chef of some kind, but yeah. but but he was a cook. But yeah, he he was he was very passionate. So when I went seven years vegan, can you imagine I went down like a lead balloon with him? Oh, I bet. Um, you can imagine. Went, what bloody hell's happened to thee, lad? Yeah. <laughs> what has happened to thee? You're withering away. And it's like, no, I'm not. I'm still all right. I'm still okay. Yeah. I know you don't have a book or anything like that, right? But um, because people will listen to this thing, well, I just want to go and grab yeah. it. But at some point, there's no question. You must be thinking about that because if you don't get a book out, I'll create the book for you. <laughs> so, I believe me, there will be a book out. I think it, it's all I can say is stay tuned. It's something okay. I want to get absolutely perfect. Over the past few years, I've been offered little book deals or whatnot here and there, but I think it's not right or whatever. I need to get it absolutely perfect. I love what I do and I'm in it for the long haul. So I can say something will come. Stay tuned. And well, I think also as well, be because I'm more of a visual person, Chris, and, I, and I, I'm mm. big into apps and I have been for, what, 12 yeah. years? I think my first app came out 12 years ago. So I was kind of head on the curve on that back then. Okay. Um, but I'd love to see an app from you i really would it's one of those good things. shout okay. yeah that would work really well with different sections i'm doing, I don't know what, i'm trying to try to sell you your own app here yeah, yeah. Uh, but do you know what i mean like you'd have like one of my favorite books from jamie was superfood oddly it love was, it uh, well not oddly but it was one of i think it was one of his best books it's not one that is often talked about no greatly but I loved it. I mean, I loved it because, of course, I'm very much into keeping up with your health and everything else. Yeah. And he was the sharpest he has ever looked while he was writing that book. He, you know what he was? It was a good series went with that on the TV, wasn't it? And he was meeting people around the world from different cultures. Yeah. And finding out why is it that you live until 88 is the average age? Oh, it's because you're eating a lot of this in your diet. I thought it was fascinating. And he did look fantastic when he did that. I mean, talking about looking fantastic, those that haven't seen Chris... <laughs> baby yet yeah. well if you're of a weak disposition don't because he's uh he's just i saw the one there's this picture of you on a running track it's like what are you two percent body fat at that point i mean it looked uh, like you must have been five percent five percent body fat it looked like that's what it at that like. point i was competing i used to run when i was late teens early 20s and then i tore my patella tendon so i had to stop so i used to compete and do you know what i think blessing in disguise i used to be so obsessed with training six seven days a week every night on the track when I stopped competing, I went from running so much to doing nothing. How can I use this time that I would be training to do something productive and make myself feel good? And that's when I started taking pictures and sharing and writing my recipes because I had to replace that kick that I got 
from from fitness to to what something else. What was your race, Chris? Was, what was your what was your race, by the way, on the track? Uh, Eight hundred meters. Because I'm building a what will be Europe's healthiest playground down in the Algarve, and we're putting a running track in. I love a running track so much that I'm putting one in. I just think I need to come down when that's ready. Oh, listen, well, hopefully you'll be at the opening, my man. It'd be really good. I mean, we've got musicians like a mini concert. We've got this. We'll have chefs and all kinds of stuff. So it should be a great, great gig. And by the way, if you're listening, if you've been to any Mario Church, your name will go into a hat and you could be at the opening. There's a little create magic thing. But yeah, we can have the mini Olympics there every week or something like that. It's going to be great. We've got a shot put. We've got high jump. Oh, Um, wow. Oh, it's going to be a bit of a giggle down there as well. When does that open? Well, September the 3rd, 2022, and that's even if it's not finished and I'm there on my knees making a juice out in the open yeah. by myself. To say it's been a challenge is an understatement. Anyway, reverting back, it's your podcast, my man. So reverting back to the app, right? So I'm very serious. Or, or your book, it'd be great to have these little sections where you've got, yeah. you know, for argument's sake, a because a, you can make vegan food so sharp. And you can Do you know make, what? Vegan oh. food, it, I, there's so many recipes I write. I always jump in at this point. There's, there's recipes I do and I haven't written it because it's vegan. I almost make it and go, oh, do you know what? That's vegan. Like, yeah. In, and I worked in the Michelin Star Indian restaurant and because of religious reasons, in India, there's a lot of people don't eat dairy or meat. So a lot of the food just happens to be vegan. It wasn't written as a trend to be vegan, but you make the most delicious potato and cauliflower or chickpea curry. It's vegan. You don't even think about it. Yeah. Because a lot of the people that, especially me, I'm I'm not an Aryan of any kind anymore. So I wouldn't call myself a vegan, a vegetarian. I suppose if there's any title, Chris, than a pescatarian. But the reason why I got rid of titles is because there's a rich tapestry of life out there. I don't want to be in Israel and go down to the Dead Sea and be in a Bedouin tent and somebody makes me something and I become this knobhead that I was for seven years and go, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm meat-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. You know what I mean? Like your your body- I love that. That's such a great mantra because I think, I mean, I don't want to offend anyone here, but there's a lot of people that go, oh, I'm I'm dairy-free, gluten-free, whatever. I think this is just my opinion. If- you're not allergic to it. There's someone that is that would do anything to have a bit of dairy or, or gluten, and it would make them really ill if they did, but they're craving it. And some people will just go, oh, do you know what? I'm not having that because I've seen it on Instagram or something. And- I agree. My take is this, is that genuinely, uh, again, I'm like you, everybody to mm. their own. But I also feel that if you're doing something for – uh, other reasons than health. So let's just yeah. say you, for whatever reason, you go, no, I don't want any animal products for whatever, you know, and that's for you an yeah. ethical thing, even if it's you know, whatever factually correct or not, mm. but to just say that's how you feel, then of course that is entirely your decision. It should be. What the issue I have sometimes with some vegetarians that happen to be significantly overweight and ill still is that they go, I don't understand it. I'm vegetarian. And I have to point out to them that you're not a vegetarian. You're a carbarian. You haven't eaten a vegetable yeah. for 10 years. And, yeah. and there are healthy meat eaters, non-healthy meat eaters. There are healthy vegetarians and non-healthy vegetarians. And it's that education. And I think that when you cook something from scratch, mm. I think that's the important thing. And the balance that you have, I've seen on all pretty yeah. much all your dishes of vegetables versus some proteins or whatever the case yeah. is. But like you said, you do some weak look anybody listening now that you know thinks oh well actually he cooks everything so i'm not really look check out the vegetarian recipes check out the yeah. vegan recipes that this boy can put together man i mean i'm called boy because <laughs> you look about 18 sorry i'm showing my age now yeah, um, well, i was with a friend of mine the other day and it was a bit embarrassing i don't know who for but <laughs> we were in the shop and my mate was buying some jeans he went oh your dad's really stylish i went <laughs> Hang on a second, my dad. I was like, well, mate, I mean, I know we had masks on and stuff, but then I was kind of, my friend didn't hear it. He's a, he's a little bit older than me. But yeah, so I, I, I don't know what happens. I used to go out when I was 17 drinking pints and all sorts, not get an ID, doing whatever I want. And now it seems like maybe it's all this good food I'm cooking, but I, I, maybe I'm it is. Useful. Because you've got a baby face. I mean, it might, yeah. mind you, it's a funny thing because I thought that would never change for me, but it does. I remember, like, I, I remember being in the States and being 28 and then going, yeah. oh, you can't, Where's your ID and stuff? And I, I had that baby face going on. Yeah. And it's like, When does that happen? All I would say, Chris, is enjoy it, man. While enjoy it lasts. It. Listen, I was telling you. The good news is, is that every day I do wake up and I think it's a great philosophy in life in general. If at any point you ever feel like you're getting old, I know it sounds weird if you ever do get that. 
feeling, not that you would for many years to come, but you just go, I'm younger today than I'm ever going to be again in my life. What a great hey, day today is. That's fantastic. And, that. and, it, and it is. I also, I don't go along with the other one, which is I'm older today than I've ever been because you can get depressed about that. So it depends on which way around. Well, it's all mindset. Everything in life's about your mindset really, isn't it? Well, see, it's my man. Listen, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I know you're busy, but yeah. you've got eminent, you're doing tons of stuff for MLS. You're so sought after and understandably mm. at the moment. And it's one of those that it's, I'm going to be trying to hunt you down in five years and there's no way, you'd be so busy. that It'd be like, yeah. there's, there's no way you can get hold of Chris Bay. I'll be going through your agents. You were doing that. I'd be <laughs> like, feel like one of those. But you, you bring, as corny as it sounds, but you bring something refreshing to the plate. Chris, you oh, really do. And, thanks so much. And, I really appreciate it. And the fact you asked me to come on the podcast, you know, I said to you, I was listening to this in the first lockdown. I said, wow, these guests are amazing. And I feel very privileged to be on here. And you've said some really nice things to me on here, but just when we've spoken in between and for you to see how much I really do care about it, I think that that means a lot to me because I really do. All I want to do is show people how to cook food from scratch and have a bit of fun doing it as well. That is what it's all about. Yeah, well, I said, I said that, I mean, that is uh, mm. the thing. When we spoke separately to this, this was ages ago before I even thought about you having on my podcast. And I just wanted to say to you, because people think, oh, am I saying this because he's on my podcast? But you know, I'm yeah. not. I said this to you yeah. privately when we first had some interaction, just how rare it is to find somebody. And I, I left you a couple of messages saying just yeah. genuine. Genuineness is very tricky these days to decipher, first of all, to find out who in the game actually genuinely wants to help people out yeah. there. And when you see somebody giving that amount of themselves and that amount of their free time and money to go and mm. buy all these expensive ingredients yeah. and put them all together, just so that, well, there's two things. I mean, I always say in, in, there's no such thing as a selfless good deed. That's from the Joey Tribbiani rule from Frank. Yeah. Cause of course, ultimately we, we get something from it and all of us needed yeah. a purpose during lockdown. I did juice along with Jace during mm. lockdown. That That's how, how, how it yeah. is because we gained something from it, but it's a win-win as corny as that expression yeah, it is. is a win -win. You know, it's a win-win. And what's incredible, Chris, you knew about that father and dad because he told you, can you imagine the thousands of people that you've influenced yeah. to cook? There's a knock-on effect. Oh, wow. they, they then say to their yeah. Uh, friends, oh, I'm going to cook. I mean, you know, get a bunch of teenagers together, all cooking together. I don't think that's ever been done. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like teenage cook along and boom. And mm. I don't know there's so much that still, you think everything's been done on the cookery front. And it hasn't. Yeah. There's I so think, much more. Yeah, there is. I think for me, it's just all about removing any barriers that people might have to cookery. Is it words that people don't understand? Like saute? Well, actually just say it in normal words, anything I can do to make it easier to get people to cook. And I think for anyone that does want to start cooking from scratch, I always say it's a bit like that journey of when you start going to the gym or training. The first few weeks or six weeks is hard, but the first time you see results, you say, look in the mirror, you've gained some muscle or lost some weight, and you think, do you know what? I like this. And then that's when it becomes addictive. And I'll tell you what, the first time you cook the first meal from scratch for yourself and you eat it, or you, your partner or your family, and it puts a smile on their face, and they're like, wow, do you know what? That is delicious. That is when you get that moment and you go, do you know what? That was really easy. Tasted good. Put a smile on everyone's face. I want to do that again. And you when you get into it. Yeah, you've inspired, you, well, I think you've inspired me. I'm not even saying this hyperbole. I think mm. as I'm listening, I'm thinking, do you know what? Let's get back into the cooking gym and start working yeah. on the cooking muscle again, mm. like you said, and do it consistently so that your brain receives a reward for it because then it will want yeah. to do it it'll want to do it then and then think yeah actually it's quite therapeutic to actually chop up some vegetables to do this yeah. and whatever but yeah no i think there'll be people listening now think do you know what? i haven't cooked in ages i want to cook easy yeah. easy meals and layman's terms i don't want this and the irony is you with mns so what we're talking about here is not just a normal chef but we're talking about a Handred X model <laughs> down in London. Chef. Not you know, just any chef. Not just any chef. Yeah, it's been wonderful having you on. If, well, not if, when, I mean, there's no question. Yeah. Uh, you produce a book, an app, or whatever it is. I'd love yeah. to have you back again because I what I'd like to do as well to go along with that. If that happens, which it will at some point, a year's time, whenever it is, I'll do a little cook along. One of your uh, 100%. I'd love do, to do that. And I'd like to come out and see you as soon as, as soon as we're allowed. Uh, yeah, that's as soon as you're allowed. Look, that's, the, that, that's the word you look for. Because we've yeah. right, all been naughty school kids and we've got to stay. Yeah, we're locked up. <laughs> we're all locked up <laughs> for a crime, Chris. I can't remember committing, but that's another yeah. political <laughs> thing that I won't even get into. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, he's the one, he's the only. Check him out on Instagram, check him out everywhere. Go back over all the stuff that he's done. He mm -hmm. is the new, like I said, cooking kid on the block. 
the way I'm looking at it, it's like talking to Jamie Oliver before he became the naked chef. This is like chatting to Jamie even just before then. This guy is going to be huge. He's big enough already. He already holds a world record. So many good things are opening up for this guy right now, and rightly so. The most genuine chef that I know is Chris Baber, everybody. Come on, let's have a round of applause. Oh, thank you. 